Hey guys, my name is Jid Wee and welcome to Dollars Jamming. So here's Frankie. This is the first time I think I've shown you guys Frankie. Zoom! Zoom! There we go. It's starting to get cold outside and I'm super excited because I hate like hot weather. Um, but Frankie has to come inside because it's too cold for her. And if I keep her in her cage while I'm doing this video, she knows that like I'm doing important things. So she's just going to start yapping and yapping. So she must be helped. So I wanted to do a lifestyle video because we haven't done those in a while and I feel like it's the right time to do it. I feel like maybe it's the weather too, like it inspires me to do something else but music. So today I wanted to touch on the subject of balancing your hobby with your life because sometimes when we get too into our hobby, like as creatives and artistic people, we kind of forget about everything else. <laughs> and there's actually a really great quote by Marcus Aurelius um, that it pretty much goes along the lines of don't be like the artist that doesn't bathe or doesn't do anything else but focus on his craft. So if you think of like Michelangelo when he was painting the 16th chapel, like obviously, you know, you think he bathed every day, of course not. He was over there going hard and like that's what we do a lot of the time. And it's crazy to think that Marcus Aurelius talked about this because that was even longer ago, like more than 2000 years ago. So people were struggling with that, like creative people have been struggling with putting their art before everything else for a really long time. The brain hasn't changed much in like 10,000 years and I'm sure like the artistic brain hasn't changed much either and touching on the artistic brain like my dad is an artist my dad paints my mom eh, a little bit not really but I do feel like that's definitely passed down like I have a daughter and she also loves like playing guitar and stuff she's only four but she, you can tell that it's already something that excites her and you know she has a musical ear so being an artist comes with its perks obviously we create amazing things but most of the time these things come from places of like what we're going through during that time so like if I'm going through an emotional time in my life like if I think about the music that I wrote like guys I'm 28 by the way I know I'm, I'm getting up there almost 30 almost 30 really felt it this year I swear my friend convinced me that I was 29 like the day before my birthday I'm like no hold up hold up am I like almost 30 had to go back and do the math so if I go back and think about the music that I made when I was like 16 I think I started recording like in garage band you know um, my first like using the little microphone on the little MacBook Pro just like singing into the microphone and playing guitar um, Probably when I was like 16. I think I made my first track I haven't even like posted these tracks anywhere. I think I did like under a different name a really long time ago um, But you guys haven't heard them. I don't think I'll post them. Maybe we'll see <laughs> but basically if I think about the music that I made back in that time like it was very different than the type of music I make now. And also I've really focused on making like music without lyrics for the last couple of years. And that mainly has to do because like when I sing, I sing from my heart and like what I'm going through at the time. And I always felt that like, I don't know, what if like an employer heard me curse or something, you know, because like I rap a little bit, yeah, haha. Ha. But I can get like very intricate and you know, I'll throw a few curse words in there and then I'm thinking, oh, what if like I'm trying to get hired and then somebody hears this and then I don't get that job because of the song. So like I stopped making music with lyrics in it, which kind of like led me to explore into like more instrumental stuff, which I definitely needed at the time. Also like getting into synthesizers and stuff. Um, definitely like pushed me to be like making more like electronic type music and instrumental type music but music has always been tied to an emotion I wouldn't even say that this is day to day although like sometimes you can notice differences like if you're sad you make a sad song if you're happy you make a happy song but I'm talking about more like long term so like thinking more of like your situation and the type of environment that you're in and what's really inspiring to write the way that you're writing Ow, this bird's biting the shit out of me though. Yeah, don't be mean, don't be so mean. So like, I'll make a specific type of music for like a certain time. Like, I made like Christian songs for like a year. Then I made like some really gangster stuff for the next year. Then I went on to making like techno. Then I went on to making lo-fi. So I feel like it's all whatever it is that you're going through in your life um, that inspires the music that you're making. But it's always tied to an emotion. And because of that, it's a really important and deep part of our lives. So like separating emotion from music making, um, um, it's kind of difficult to think about so like it's always instilled in our day it's always instilled in our mind it's always instilled in everything that we're doing um, at least that's how I feel it is for me and with that being said I do see that like music definitely steals time from like my family time from even myself like taking care of myself and things that I need to like get in track with me I feel like sometimes if I just wake up and get straight to music making or not even music making but just 
trying to do something creative like I made a lot of live streams the past like three months and I think I was making like two to three in a week and then I took a break like this month because you know Christmas and holidays and Thanksgiving and all that but also because like I'm going through changes with not only like my setup but like in my way that I make music so you guys know that like this channel started off as Dollars Jamming but before Dollars I did make music on GarageBand and it was kind of like being completely in the dot that like you know kind of like led me away from music and i'll get i'll make another separate video about like you know why you probably hate your doll and like how to introduce it back into your workflow once you you know realize like what an amazing tool it is and you have other tools like i've learned absolutely so much from going dollars that like i wouldn't change absolutely anything about it but now like knowing everything that i know um i see like what a powerful tool the doll can be so like i'm super excited to like learn Ableton and stuff and like I was sitting with like I just got the new MacBook the M1 and I'm super sad so like the machine um software isn't ready for it yet so I'm like yeah I'm gonna use my machine with my Mac no it's not supported yet god damn it <laughs> so I'm really gonna focus on like learning Ableton this year and all this time and like sitting down in Ableton and staring at it and knowing that I know absolutely nothing was like so exciting because like I feel like I've I'm not gonna say master but I feel like I have reached a high level of enlightenment um, with all this synthesizer MIDI CV all this stuff that I've taught myself um, and now I'm ready to like take all that and transfer it into like the DAW and really learn like how to use the DAW properly I feel like if you're a musician that later got into music production like I'm a guitar player and a piano player like those are my two main things and I haven't even played guitar on this channel like how crazy is that I literally just bought a classical guitar because I haven't had one in like five years I think just because I've been like so obsessed with synthesizers and drum machines and hardware and like it was a whole new world guitar kind of just like went out the window this bird is biting the shit out of me by the way just stop so I feel like if you're a musician that gets into the doll like I'm just trying to record before anything I'm a musician don't climb on my head and this bird totally just shat on me God damn it, Frankie. And I know I made my minimalism video like almost two years ago, but this stuff still like creeps up into my life if I'm not careful, especially because of this YouTube channel. So being like more conscious of like what I really use to make music and what I really need to make music has really taken all that time that I used to spend like looking at synthesizers and looking at stuff to buy and getting excited about new things. Like all that time is now spent elsewhere, you know, like on other hobbies, um, cooking, doing this, drawing spending time with my family just anything that can take me away from not being fully immersed into you know my synthesizer addiction because it really was really bad at one point and like yes it's funny to talk about but like i'm sure you guys have all seen this meme like oh why is he looking at more synthesizers he just bought one and haha it's a meme yeah we all get it it's funny but at the end of the day like if you have a partner like this is probably something that you're going through and i can imagine like being on the other end of it like if i was the wife and then my husband was like obsessed with synthesizers like i would be so jealous all the time you know of him paying attention to all these synthesizers so i get it like i get how like this can affect people's relationships you no longer hang out with your friends because you're always busy with your synthesizers or you're always on your phone in facebook groups and like facebook groups is another thing that like is another such a time waster and i left social media you might have noticed maybe not but I left social media, I think it's been like two months now and God, it's been amazing. It's been one of the best things that I've ever done in my life. I just woke up one day and I was like, you know what? I refuse to waste another second of my life on this bullshit. I am done with it. Like it was such a time waster and there's so much like research, especially coming out now about it. And I've known about it for a really long time. Like I know that I've had a problem with Facebook and checking it constantly. I remember like at the peak of it, like at least maybe like uh, five, I've been on Facebook. God, I'm so old now. Um, I've been on Facebook since I was like 14 years old. So like, where's the math? God, it's almost like 15 years since I've been on Facebook. God, what a waste of life. Can't imagine how many hours. I don't even want to think about like how many hours I've wasted, like just looking at dumb shit and like wasting time. Like it is the biggest time waster of our millennia of it is the biggest like downfall of humanity. And yeah, you know, just do your research on social media and like how it's destroying your life. Maybe it's not. Maybe you got it all together and good for you. But if you feel that like You've got no control over how many times you pick up your phone, how many times you refresh your feed, how many times you open your apps and like look at your screen time because like anything above three hours is not acceptable anymore. I used to have like five to six hours of screen time. Now it's gone 
down to two hours which like i'm super proud of but i can see that slowly like other things creep up so like you know i'll be spending time on amazon or now i'm just on google looking at stuff so it really all depends like what you look at and stop climbing on my head please and how much of your time you're wasting on these things that like have been made to like keep you there wasting time and addicted to these platforms why are you so cranky frankie once you start paying more attention and being more conscious of where your time is going and what you're spending your time on it's a lot easier to see that other areas of your life are not getting the attention that they need and i'm not gonna say it's completely bad like it's not all bad um because you do get to meet like-minded individuals but you should really use these tools to like try to meet people socially obviously not right now because of all the crazy world nonsense that's going on but hopefully once everything passes try to join like local stuff you know local synth meets local this instead of just like being on facebook groups if you think about it, most of the people that are on Facebook, they're not making music. If not, they would not be on Facebook. So just put the two and two together. Don't be that person that's just here posting pictures. I used to, that used to be me. So like, you know, I'm not here to like cast blame on anybody. I'm just trying to teach you like what I've learned and like try to save you time because those that are smart learn from others, you know. You can always learn from yourself when you make mistakes, but if you're smart, you learn from others. So instead of wasting your time looking at new synthesizers, looking at new gear that's announced, looking at videos on stuff that you don't have, that's another one. Like obviously if you're looking at videos of stuff that you don't have and you want it, you want it, you want it, you're gonna get it eventually, right? Because like when you're little, you have someone like an adult figure. Hopefully you had an adult figure that was like, no, you can't eat cookies and ice cream every day. What's wrong with you? But as an adult, you're the one that has to be like, no, you can't eat cookies and ice cream every day. If not, you're going to eat cookies and ice cream every day. Same thing. You have to be the one that tells you, no, I'm not going to spend thousand dollars on this synthesizer. I just bought a synthesizer last month. You know what I'm saying? So you need to learn to be more responsible with yourself, not only financially, but the more stuff that you get, the more distracted that you're going to be. All this stuff is distracting you from like really making music. At the end of the day, you just need something to record into a keyboard, maybe a drum machine, not even because you can play drums on your keyboard sometimes um and that's it the more stuff that you have the harder it is to really get something done and a lot of people always ask me like jay should i get this 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 and this i'm like no no don't get any of that just get that one thing maybe the first thing that you mentioned or don't even get anything if you already have stuff um really learn what you have and also don't be afraid to sell because like I buy and sell, buy and sell all the time, but I know a lot of people are like get attached to things and like, I can't sell this, you know, I'm gonna want it later. Um, and that happens sometimes, but then again, you might sell it again, so screw it, you might find it cheaper. Always buy used, <laughs> always try to make a profit on things that you buy. So, what I'm trying to say is, don't let your hobby consume your whole life by allowing it to like take over every single area of your life. So, like, if you're on your phone looking at stuff, if you're thinking about it, if you're dreaming about it, if you're talking about it, everything is synthesizers. No, can't be that way and the less you're involved with like social media and looking at stuff the more time that you're actually gonna invest in making music instead of going on instagram and spending half an hour scrolling watching two seconds of each video of people jamming and you know people with cool stuff and taking pictures and this and that you could use that time to like make some music play your instrument and ultimately enjoy your life a little more that's it guys i hope you enjoyed this crazy super fast super crazy talking video i'm like super energized <laughs> and yeah this is frankie as you can see she she like she thinks she's like the queen of the universe you know like they say when birds climb on your head they think that they own you so i guess we know who the queen in this house really is catch you guys in the next one stay safe happy holidays love you guys subscribe thumbs up if you love me love you take care